All right, so today we're going to talk about career development in the WordPress space and what that means and what you can do with it and where you can go with WordPress. You can do a lot of different things. You don't have to be a developer to have a career working in this space. A lot of people get stumped with that. I don't touch code ever. I have a personal policy that I will never ever touch a repo. I will not go into Bitbucket or anything like that. It's just for your protection. Um, I can set up um, all that stuff, but I really don't even like to do that. So, All right, so why are you here? I mean, that's Portland. So this is my first time to Portland, and I'm so in love with the city. I already just want to move. I don't even want to go home. It's so beautiful, right? You could be doing anything today. Portland's gorgeous. There's like a farmer's market. There's tons of farmer's markets. There's like all this hiking. There's waters. You're sitting in a chapel listening to a tech conversation. So why? What do you, what do you guys want to do with WordPress? Who, who currently wants to change their career course and maybe do it within the WordPress community, right? A handful. Who works, who's actively making money with WordPress today? Whose full-time job, who puts food on their table with just WordPress? Right? Okay, yes, me too, yeah. But three years ago, that wasn't the case. Three years ago, I didn't even know what a WordCamp was. I have been using WordPress a long time. I mean, I set up my blogs on it years back. And as a copywriter, clients use WordPress. That's cool. It's easy to use. I get it. But I didn't really know that you could, like, carve out a full career with this piece of technology. And uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But that's why a lot of people come to this talk, to find out what else can I do besides code, if I don't code. What can I do in this community? How can I make money? So um, in WordCamp uh, LA, somebody, one of the joke questions was, uh, if you go to Google and type in how to WordPress, it's like one of the top searches, how to WordPress. So this is how you WordPress. First thing that you have to do when you're starting your career is do stuff break it all, realize how much you don't know, and then start learning, right? So there's some resources. And I put some context on these slides, and you can find them on Twitter. You can, the, I'll publish the link to the live slides later. But WP Developers Club is a great learning resource. So if you're starting out and you want to, you know, start figuring out what's the difference between a style sheet and a PHP file, there you go. Actually, they're going to be doing a lot of development uh, training to keep you going through the reins. Um, WP 101 is a great way to get started also. The next thing you do is you start learning, okay, I, you learn that you don't know what you're doing, so you gotta start networking, right? You're gonna go to WordCamps, you're gonna go to meetups, you're gonna get on Twitter, you're gonna find the advanced Facebook group and uh, realize that this is a, there's a huge, vast world of knowledge out there, and you're gonna tap into it, and you're gonna realize how much you don't know, so you're, then you're gonna go back to step one, and you're gonna start breaking things again, and then you're gonna start learning how to fix those again. Um, the important part of that step is networking. The wonderful thing about the WordPress community is that when you don't know how to do something, if you will be transparent about that and put it out there into our collective force, somebody will help you. Somebody will help you figure out uh, when you get stuck, right? Who, who's had that experience, right? You just tweet something out, literally. Well, a couple years ago, you could literally just tweet out, I'm stuck in a project, I'm doing something with whatever, can someone help me? Within a couple hours, someone's going to send you back a resource. Oh, so and so wrote a blog post. Oh, there's a tutorial over here. Oh, check out this, you know, this plugin, and it's amazing. Um, then you're going to actually start making money. You're going to get to file your own DBA, and you're going to get to do client work, and people are going to actually pay your invoices. And that's about like the third year of digging into WordPress. Then you're going to be like, ooh. I can actually like, you know, set up a blog for 500 bucks. That's awesome, right? Um, and then you realize, oh, that was a lot of work. I think I'm gonna triple that rate. <laughs> then you're gonna start making a living with it. You're still doing, you're still doing what you know to do and you're still learning and you're still networking and you're still building your business, but then you're gonna start making a living. You're gonna start thinking, maybe I don't have to go to my day job. Maybe I can actually do this and not have to get up and drive to work at eight o'clock in the morning. Maybe, maybe you really can work in your pajamas at two o'clock in the morning and make a living. That sounds fun. Um, you're gonna have like, you're gonna give yourself a title. You'll be like Sarah Pressler, co-founder of Codebrain Media. We have one project right now. It's very lucrative at the moment. Um, 
And then you're gonna find a mentor. You're gonna say to yourself, this is really hard. I'm not really sure I'm cut out for this. And if you're smart, you're gonna tweet that out there or connect with your networking group and you will find someone who's done this and who's gone before you and who's walked this road and who's happy to share with you how they moved from learning and breaking and networking to running their company. So and it could be a small mentorship where you're just going back and forth with someone that you feel comfortable with or you can join like WP Elevate I think is I've gone mind blank here for a minute. Yes, WP Elevation, right. Um, he's awesome. Chris, who else does mentoring? You do mentoring, right? Who, there's lots of, re like, lots of people are stepping into that space now where we've matured enough that there are some leaders within the community who will help you take your business from that DBA with maybe an LLC to a couple of employees and big contracts and it's sustainable. So it's, it's available. Um, then, then you can start helping others. Then you can reach out on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and at WordCamps. You can get up here and give a talk on how you went from zero to hero in a couple of years going through this process. Um, you can get involved with CORE. We're having a contributor day tomorrow. I highly encourage everybody to show up for it. it. You will see that if you're not a developer, there's still lots of ways you can contribute to WordPress in the, in the global community. Um, and then just when you get in the groove of things, everything changes and you're going to start all over and go back to the first step. So just when you think you're a solid front-end developer and you've got all of that knowledge down, then JavaScript takes over the web and you have to go back and learn JavaScript. And then when you're a back-end developer and you're like, I have got this down to a T, someone pushes out you know, the REST API and then everything changes and you've got to go all the way back to the start of it and start all over again. So this process never changes. It never ends. It's a continuum. You're going to cycle through it constantly. So don't, when you're moving through this journey, don't get stuck at one of these and quit. Okay, because somebody out there is at that point and frustrated too, or they've moved through one of those levels and they're gonna help you. They will, they will help you. That's the great thing about this community. So what are the career fields in WordPress, right? I kind of leveled this up so that half of the slide will show you what you need code for. Design, UI, UX, website migrations, training, engineering, development, maintenance, plug-in and theme development, information architecture, technical customer service. You really need to know some level of coding for those, and the, the jobs will be pretty specific. You know, if you go in for customer service, you're gonna need to know what, you know, what software you're gonna be supporting. If you're going in for, you know, um, information architecture, you're really gonna need to understand how WordPress functions and how content needs to relay in that system. Um, but look at all of the positions that do not require code. It's helpful. It's good to know. It's good to be able to follow along. And it, you really actually need to be able to, if you're a product manager or project manager, you need to be able to understand what your developers need to do and what your customers want to have happen. And, and you can do that. You, you can learn this. But sales, marketing, documentation, communication, content creation, virtual assistants, WordPress training, business ownership, photography, media, um, there's a bunch. So those things do not require a high level of coding requirement. Um, I would say that when I started working remote, I ran a job board for work at home job seekers in Austin. It was a little startup, so the bootstrap startup. And part of my job was to vet each um, job that came in, so I'd have to find the employer online, make sure it's a real person, make sure the, the job was legit, and that was, oh, 2012, and almost all the jobs that we posted were development jobs. It was a tech board, so almost everything in WordPress was programming, front-end, back-end, you know, technical. Now, when I start tweeting out job resources for WordPress people who want to work in a remote position, 50% of those job leads I find are content related, project management related, product development related, um, admin, um, editors. So it's changed a lot in three years. And that, that this non-technical side in WordPress is going to keep growing because, I mean, as a community, as an economy, it's maturing. 
So if you don't know code, don't feel like you're going to get stuck at a level. You can go high. I think there's one more button under there that we can't see because the slides are off, but it's um, C-suite and executive level. Um, I would say five years ago, it would be pretty rare to have a CEO or C like a CEO or CTO or that level of executive with a salary that supports that level of work. But today, that's possible, and we've got we've got some of those people here. So it's grown a lot. Man, I wish the slides were a little more um, better, but so I need to do some research because my area of knowledge is remote work and there's a lot of it out there. I know that there's more jobs with traditional in office, but these are the three I thought of or for WP Engine, that's WordPress development or WordPress hosting uh, company in Austin. They, you know, that's, you can go to the office and work, have a normal job. Uh, Flywheel is in-house, CoSchedule, that's a, another WordPress plugin that evolved into a business and it's an, you know, you go to their offices. I'm sure there's a lot more. And then the remote side, um, Automatic, Crowd Favorite, Tin Up, Web Dev Studios, Securi, Uptrending, Modern Tribe, Envato, Delicious Brains. At the bottom of the slide, which we can't see, are probably fields you hadn't thought of, like PETA, you know, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. They're actually actively hiring right now for a WordPress developer and a content manager, somebody to manage all the content on the back end of their WordPress installs. Microsoft moved all their blogs to WordPress last year and you know they have positions open. They actually have an open source um, part of their company so that you could, there's WordPress people that work there and they work remote. Um, the United States Digital Service, they are all remote. 18f.com is a great resource for learning how to like interact with a remote agency. That's it's our government. They're going to be working from home. So lots of, lots of opportunities, you know, in the digital space. So is there any way to fix that? I don't know. Maybe scroll the screen up a little bit, see if that works. No? Oh, well. Advice for the journey. Yeah, that's not going to work, so. Hmm. Well, that's Matt Mullenweg's forehead. <laughs> and he gave a real, if you are new to WordPress or maybe you've been around a little and you don't know the history of WordPress, Matt always, I mean, his, um, I'm so like mind blank this morning, State of the Union talks, he always gives a good little overview of WordPress's history. But actually at the Joomla conference in 2013, he gave this really great it's an one hour presentation and he takes you from the very, uh, beginning origins of WordPress to its current state. It's one of my favorite talks. You will learn WordPress history. You will learn about their mission. You will learn about the culture that Matt has worked really hard to grow and develop in this space. And it's one of my favorite talks. It, the slides will be online. And there's active URLs in here where you can go click and it takes you straight to the YouTube. And I highly recommend you guys watch it. I think it'll give you a great appreciation for the economy that you're working in, that you're stepping into, that you're making money off of. So, but he says there was actually a point in his life where he didn't know, you know, what a patch or commit was. So, I mean, that's cool, right? And now he's like a billionaire at 30. So, we can all be there. This is Jake Goldman. He runs tinup.com. And he, his quote, there's real opportunity to build healthy businesses in WordPress, but it's not easy. It's going to be hard work. No one's going to hand you. Nobody, unless you're like, Nason is going to say, hey, we want you to rebuild the government with WordPress, right? That's probably not going to happen to most of us, but you can make a living off of it. It is hard work, but you can do it. There's Carrie Dill's eyes peering over you this morning. <laughs> this is so awkward. Oh, there's the rest of Jake's slide. So you can see more. That was from Matt Re mattreport.com is a great um, resource for keeping up with the community. And he did an interview. So that's there. Carrie Dills gave a really awesome talk at San Francisco 2013 about collaboration, not competition within our space. And if you ever get the chance to see Carrie Dills talk, she's phenomenal. She's so engaging. She's one of the, my favorite people in WordPress. And instead of working against your competitors, creatively find ways to collaborate with them. Iron sharpens iron sort of mentality. She's wonderful. Her links are right there. 
or Camp San Francisco. I believe this is the talk that she, oh, never mind, I won't embarrass her. Y'all can watch it and laugh at it. Paul Clark, you get to see more of him because his you know, profile shot wasn't so big. So there's Paul Clark, he's a good friend of mine. He was actually the first person I worked for in the WordPress economy, uh, formally. And he, when he and his wife were about five years ago, they completely changed everything about their lives. They ditched all of their belongings. They set up um, a completely nomadic lifestyle. They went to Thailand and using WordPress created a system that allows the free rangers in Burma to track real-time human rights violations. And it's literally saving lives. Um, thousands of lives are being saved from his WordPress build, uh, him and Scott Clark with using the pods framework. It's an amazing software piece of software. Um, if you want to change your life, if you want to move from one space to the other and you think you can't do it, you actually can. The solutions are a lot easier than you think they are. And don't let your belief that you can't do it stop you. Go back to the list of ways to do WordPress and network, find a mentor, and take the steps, just do it. It'll be scary, but it'll pay off. Yep, so there's the rest of it. He gave a really great talk at TEDx Anchorage. He was actually in Portland a couple years ago for a lightning talk on that, and those links are up there. He ran Brainstorm Media, which is where I worked with him. He went to 10 Up, and now he's a digital nomad doing his own thing, touring the country in a bus. It's pretty cool. So the last flow chart you will ever need, so how do you move, right? How do you get from point A to point B? Because you're gonna have a lot of obstacles, you're gonna have a lot of questions, and you're gonna be wondering, how will I do this? It's not gonna happen. But I have a solution for you. It's gonna be weird, because it's gonna be cut in half, but we'll get through it. So you have a problem. Maybe you broke your website. Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you lost your job. Maybe you hate your job and you don't want to be there anymore, but you don't know how to get out of it. Maybe you want to learn, maybe you do front end develop it and you really want to do back end. You really want to move into that engineer space. You want to level up your, maybe you hate developing, maybe you're sick of it and you really want to learn how to project manage or maybe you want to be a community evangelist or whatever, right? You have a problem, you need to fix it. Can you do anything about it? It's really simple. Yes, then just go do it. Like, quit overthinking all this stuff. Just go do it. You can't do anything about it? Are you stuck? Then find someone who can do it for you. And in the WordPress community, that doesn't always mean you're going to have to pay them. You can ask for help when you're starting out, and you will get it, right? So it's really simple. So that's the last flow chart you ever need. Any problem you're facing in life, if you will apply this mentality, you'll get through it. You'll either power forward, or you'll go find help. And then guess what? You'll be able to power forward, right? So you can resolve everything. There's actually like a, um, an R-rated version of this flowchart, but since we're in a church, I'm not going to actually use it. <laughs> That's where Camp Austin's badge, and everyone's like, it's the wrong badge. But that was my very first WordCamp to go to. And I heard Carrie Dill's talk, and I heard Chris Lemma speak, and I heard, oh, Chris Wiegman, he's a really good guy, and a lot of people there. I was blown away, just completely blown away by the level of intelligence and excellence that I was seeing in this community. I was completely like fell in love with it and just the fact that you had really really smart people standing on stage telling you how to do stuff for your business and they're not getting anything out of it we don't get paid to come to word camps and talk right so you've got people up there going well this is how I fixed a problem if you have the problem here's the code that's gonna fix it that's pretty unique I think you know and then you have Chris Lima helping people become more professional. He's really raising the bar for that. You had Carrie Deals at WordCamp Austin giving a talk on customer service. And I was like, okay, this doesn't have to be a super highly, you don't, not everybody in this field has to be highly technical. And Paul Clark is the one who said, you should go to a WordCamp and see what the community is about. And I had met him through a, 
a funny set of circumstances. And I wrote him back, and I was like, wow, this, these guys are amazing. Everyone's so smart. Everyone's so nice. Everyone's so friendly. Never seen this in any other career field. And he said, okay, great. When can I hire you? And I was like, oh, I'm still working for Jill's job, so I'm fine. You're crazy. I'm not working for you. I don't even know you. I met you on, met you on the Internet. That's strange. And um, three weeks later, the bootstrapper shut down the program, Jill's Jobs, he decided that he was gonna go to Amsterdam for a month and then come back and go on to a different, a different startup and I was kind of over him, so I quit while I was fired, which was awesome. And so Paul Clark calls a couple weeks later and he says, hey, are we still doing that infographic for Jill's Jobs that you know I had hired Taylor and him to organize for me and create? I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. No, I'm fi I was fired, like I was let go because we were shut down and, and he was like, oh, you're not working? No, I'm laying by the pool. <laughs> he was like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm just gonna hang out on unemployment for a while and lay by the pool all summer. And he was like, I'll call you back in a few minutes. Right, whatever. So about 10 minutes later, he calls back and he's like, okay, I really wanna hire you. And I said, wait, we put an ad on Jill's jobs and you interviewed like five people that I helped you pick from our user pool and he was like, yeah, they were horrible. I didn't, I didn't hire any of them, I wanna hire you. Can I still hang out by the pool? He was like, yeah, I don't care. Okay, cool, sounds fun. <laughs> he needed help with project management, office admin, he needed help with a lot of things and we moved a lot of, it was a small team, five of us, and we moved some big projects through in a very short amount of time and then it was also during the period of time when he was uh, merging in with TinUp and so there was a lot of company change going on. It was a great experience and then after that, I went to Web Dev Studios for six months and learned a lot. Learned a lot about project management in WordPress while while my time, you know, there. It all started because I went to WordCamp Austin on a whim. It was 20 bucks, whatever. It's 45 minutes from my house, let's go, check it out. If it's completely nerdy, we'll leave and go find something to do in town for the day. We stayed all day, went to the after party, met so many people, and that's how I got involved in the community. So. That was 13, right? And it's only two years later, and I'm talking at WordCamp Portland. So that's kind of fun. That's how fast you can hop in and grow. But it takes work. It wasn't an easy journey. There were a lot of months that I was like, hmm, I wonder how we're going to pay the mortgage. <laughs> but it worked out. I kept putting myself out there, and work keeps coming in. And I think that's true for most people that I speak with. And they actively put themselves in the space and they stop worrying about how it's going to work, it tends to start to work out. They start putting that flow chart in place. Can you do anything about it? Then do it. Are you stuck? Then find help. And it will take time, but it will evolve if you stick with it. Oh. Belton. Yes. Do you need me to tell you again? Okay, capital B, letter three, lowercase l, lowercase t, zero, lowercase n, one exclamation point. He should get like a round of applause for that. Yeah. Really, the other important thing to do when you're getting started in the WordPress community, when you're getting started in your career, is don't be afraid to go to Contributor Day. Don't be afraid to dive into giving back to the software that you're using to make money. I think that's a very important part of our collective force. We have a core of people who spend a lot of time developing the software for us to use and for us to implement and for us to make money with. And the way you can give back, go to your WordCamps, go to your meetups, and then come to Contributor Day. If you don't code, somebody will show you how to get into the forum and answer questions that maybe don't require code, like, hey, how do I download WordPress? Here's the link. All right, that's not complicated. Anyone can do that. Um, they'll teach you how to help with the documentation. Can you edit docs? You don't have to do anything else but edit the documentation that's going into the codex. It's important, it's very important. And I know that sometimes you're like, okay, I can't take on one more thing that's a volunteer unpaid position. Well, you're making a lot, you're making money off of stuff that someone volunteered for you to have access to. And I think it's a little bit self-centered to not give back some of your time. None of us would be here if there wasn't a group of core committers actively working to make sure that the software powering 24% of the web still functions, right? So give up a little bit of your Sundays after your WordCamps and come on out. You don't have to stay all day. They usually feed you. Tomorrow, we get to have the cultured caveman. Okay, how could you pass that up? <laughs> right? It's like, 
classic Portland food truck grub. You got to come get some. So please show up for that tomorrow. And then any other, the meetups. I don't, I'm not from Portland, so I don't know how active the WordPress meetup scene is here. Is it pretty solid? Yeah? Okay, cool. It's very active. I would get involved with that. Austin's WordPress group is like at 2,000 members, and they ended up dividing it into a beginner group, an intermediate group, and an advanced group. And they, every month they have at least three, four meetings where they're teaching you how to use the software, the plugins, the functionality, how to manage the content, how, what is a REST API, who needs to know about it? I mean, it's, they're always great resources, so get involved. And who's responsible for their career? You are 100% responsible for your own life. No one is ever going to say, I really want to pay you $100,000 a year to hang out at the pool. Sadly, that's my dream job, but hasn't happened yet. I was a stay-at-home mom. I homeschooled my kids. I forego a career, dropped out of college to have a family. That uh, marriage didn't last. So I found myself in a very um, peculiar predicament of, well, how do I transfer my executive mommy skills into a career? It's really not that hard to do. You just have to have the mindset of being able to you know, navigate through that. And it would have been nice for someone to say, you're such a great mom, we're going to pay you to stay home and keep raising those kids. But people just don't really like to do that. So I had to sort of figure out a way to pay the mortgage without a husband, which is in that situation, okay. So, but that's my responsibility, right? That's not anybody else's. So I had to figure out, this is what I wanna do, this is the space I wanna work in, these are the people that I wanna be involved with, this is the community that I've fallen in love with, it's a great community, really good people here, and this is where I'm gonna hunker down. The journey hasn't been as seamless as I thought it would be, but I sure have learned a lot, and people have asked, you know, I had some, Jobs that didn't work out as great as I thought they would be. So what? I learned a lot. You know, you'll get through it. So if I can do it, if I can go from just being a stay-at-home mom to supporting my family all by myself in three years, I mean, that's pretty awesome. You guys can do it. So there's some Sarah linkage that slides out there. I'll publish it in a minute, and you can click through it. But I work with ServerPress. I work with another company in um, Philly, or actually Scranton, called Plain. Um, my own Codebrain Media, I'm a mom and partner, I'm always on Twitter, and then I have a job board. If you are looking for work, and I don't make any money off of it, it's just links I find and I share on the, I share through Twitter. It's, there's the URL for it, it's just a little, really like a link feed, it's not really a blog blog, but, so there's that, and that's how you can keep up with it. Do y'all have any questions? Anybody? Well, uh, you already answered the question, but uh, you're from Texas, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Heather, wherever you are, you got the answer. Uh, who got a question for Sarah? Oh, wait, one, one second. This is really important. Bef Those are yours. <laughs> I was, was going to go out to the parking lot and click around. <laughs> well, we got the keys found. Uh, any questions for Sarah? Don't be shy. Anyone? No? Yes. Oh. I call that an implementator. You can, that's how I sort of categorize it. There's people who can implement websites and get everything plugged in and sort of working together, dive into those PHP files if you need to, but for the most part, you're just doing an installation of the work that somebody else has already built. So we have, that's how I've categorized everybody. We have engineers, right, who are the ones building things like the REST API. Right? And then we have developers who take that work and develop products, and then we have the implementers who take those products and then make money with them. And everybody's working in different fields, but it's all, it's all woven together. So that's how I look at it. Some people would say they're a developer because they are developing websites. Um, when you're job hunting, it's really important to know the difference between that, right? If someone's looking for theme installations, theme customizations, Probably an implementator could manage that. 
Um, if they're looking for custom theme development, maybe a high-end implementator could do it, but you're probably going to need to know a little bit more. So it's important to sort of wrap your head around those different. And I know job listings are always intimidating. And one thing, I gave a talk last weekend about career development. One thing I would encourage you to do is when you're looking at a job listing and you think, okay, I have 20% of these skills and 80% of them, I have no idea what they're talking about. Just apply for it. If you get selected for an interview and they hire you, that company believes that you can do that work and they, they know they have the resources to train you. So don't let little things keep you from going forward. I applied in 2011 and 12 and 13 for lots of jobs that I didn't know if I was qualified for and because I knew I could do the work, but maybe I didn't have that specific career experience. I mean, oh yeah, I could do a project management. I raised four kids. Um, <laughs> right? I know, they're like the never ending, like the project that keeps iterating. Um, so don't let, don't let your own insecurities keep you from, from going forward. Just jump in and go for it. If, if the job, if you get turned down, it means it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't the right thing for you. If you take the job and then you quickly realize you don't like it, you're in over your head, you don't like the way things are done, just quit. Find another job. I mean, not like it's that easy, but you know what I'm saying. Don't, don't get stuck somewhere where you're unhappy, but don't let your limitations keep you from going forward. Thank you, Sarah. Any other questions from the uh, uh, career day, career request? I guess... I guess writing, you know, working with children is like, you know, you've heard all the people and CEOs and all that. They're like the worst clients <laughs> ever. Children or the yes, CEOs? Yes, the clients. A uh, couple of announcements real quick. Thank you, Sarah. Sure. Uh, at Sarah Kressler on Twitter.